Hello, my name is Brandon Frame. Welcome to Social Emotional Learning and Mental Health, using social emotional skills to deepen resilience. I'm excited to discuss social emotional learning and its central relationship to mental health with you. This session enables us to tap into and build resilience by demonstrating how to teach social emotional learning skills that support long-term coping skills and reinforce protective factors. Today, we will identify connections between mental health and social emotional development. We will also organize mental health strategies around an SEL framework and understand the rationale for such frameworks. Let's start by reflecting together. Think about what in the last year or two was difficult to deal with and how did you cope? Where and how did you develop that coping skill? Now it's your turn to reflect. Let's pause for three seconds. You just reflected, not just on your challenges, but how you've dealt with them. Today, we'll hear how to even more deeply develop these skills in ourselves and our students. So often, we talk about how students need a consistent and connected environment, and that's true, but you all need that as well in your communities. A, because you deserve that, and B, because when adults consistently align work and focus on their well-being, students experience a supportive and coherent and organized environment. And this is especially true around mental health. We can't have positive mental health outcomes without social emotional skills, and we can't teach social emotional learning without impacting positive mental health. And since this is such an important undertaking, all adults in a child's life have to come together for this work. So today, we'll align and organize our practices to better connect mental health and social emotional learning and reinforce that developing our students' positive mental health is all of our responsibility. Now, I'd like to take you briefly through some related numbers. According to the National Alliance on Mental Health, one in five U.S. adults experience mental illness each year. One in 20 U.S. adults experience serious mental illness each year. One in six U.S. youth aged 6 through 17 experience a mental health disorder each year. 50% of all lifetime mental illness begins by age 14 and 75% by age 24. In terms of the annual prevalence among U.S. adults by condition, Anxiety disorders and major depressive episodes make up over 27% of conditions. Conditions like obsessive compulsive disorder, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and borderline personality disorder altogether make up around 6% of conditions. So in fact, it's not severe mental illness like schizophrenia that most impacts our country. This is not to minimize those conditions experiences or numbers, but sometimes associating mental health with severe conditions can stop us from realizing that we can impact mental health in ourselves and others. So today we will talk about proactive measures and coping strategies that respond to this fact, and these measures include social emotional learning. Why social emotional learning, you might wonder. A widely cited 2011 meta-analysis previously showed that SCL programs immediately improve mental health, social skills, and academic achievement. The current study shows that school-based social-emotional learning interventions continue to benefit students for months and even years to come. Social-emotional learning participants were less likely to have a clinical mental health disorder, even 20 years later. That's incredible. I now want to connect this to your experience and prior knowledge. Reflect on the following. What do you already know about mental health supports in your school? What's available? Who supports it? And how? Let's review some key language to ensure we're talking about the same things. These are our working definitions for today, but we understand that there are many other valid ways to define this work. When I say mental health, I mean, quote, Mental health is a dynamic state of eternal equilibrium, which enables individuals to use their abilities in harmony with universal values of society. 
basic cognitive and social skills, the ability to recognize, express, and modulate one's own emotions, as well as empathize with others, the flexibility to cope with adverse life events and function in social roles, and a harmonious mind-body connection contribute to the state of eternal equilibrium. One of the main reasons we're using this mental health definition is because positive mental health means being able to do what you typically do and successfully being able to do whatever you define as success or a goal. So we wanted a definition of mental health that was not just the absence of disease or turmoil. That's why we will often say positive mental health today in order to remind us of just that. And when I say social emotional learning, I mean the process through which children and adults develop the skills, attitudes, and values necessary to understand and manage life tasks, such as cognitive learning, forming relationships, and the flexibility to adapt to challenges and expectations of a complex society. As I said before, today is about alignment and organization. So with that said, let's think about these definitions as you reflect on the following. How do social emotional learning and mental health and the interplay between them show up in your community? Who is responsible for which work? What does it look, sound, and feel like when positive mental health thrives in your community? Let's take a moment to reflect. Let's take three seconds. Now that you've reflected on how this currently looks in your community, let's build on how social emotional learning and mental health are integrated in your community. To do this, we need to break our SEL definition down further into competencies. Those are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and social management. Each of these competencies can be broken down into skills, the very skills critical to supporting positive mental health. Let's provide just one example of a skill that fits under one of these competencies to even more deeply connect how mental health links to social emotional skills. For instance, under self-management is the skill students demonstrate increasing levels of independence and the ability to set and achieve goals. Now let's think about healthy coping mechanisms and link them back to the SEL indicator we just discussed. First, another point about language. The difference between coping mechanisms and protective factors is that protective factors aren't always in your control like a biological or environmental factor. And coping mechanisms are often more in your control, like setting up a mindfulness routine. And there is overlap. We also want to differentiate between healthy and maladaptive coping skills and be mindful of how values and culture shape how we label a student's behavior and coping strategy. Today we'll discuss healthy coping mechanisms Though we must remember that there's always a reason someone chooses a maladaptive coping strategy. It's attempting to solve a problem, but it may be maladaptive in the long term. So an example of a healthy coping strategy is developing routines. And to do this, we encourage that intentional and thoughtful creation of healthy and consistent routines like eating well, exercising regularly, and sleeping enough. Model this behavior and create safety through consistency. Remember that physical health and mental health are closely connected. So let's think about the two questions as we link developing routines to social emotional learning. What social emotional learning indicators need to be activated for students and or adults to successfully develop this coping strategy? For instance, in order for a student to develop healthy habits, and routinize them, they have to activate the skill we mentioned before. Students demonstrate increasing levels of independence and the ability to set and achieve goals. So students can set and meet routine-related goals with a trusted adult, but eventually develop and follow routines aligned to personal goals independently. The next question to ask is, where have students and or adults been supported to develop the above identified skills? For instance, all advisories across the school were taught Lesson 2.15 that supported them to align goals and habits to what's important to them. Content classes and school-based counselors utilized the same language, example FAB goals, to reinforce the SEL skills taught in advisory. 
As you can see, social emotional skills are central to the coping strategies that will increase positive mental health. Coping strategies like mindfulness, recognizing emotions, and so on all come to life through social emotional skills. So as you think about the coping strategies necessary for resilience for you, your colleagues, and students, remember to connect them and break them down into the necessary social emotional skills. Because when these skills are taught and learned, no matter our age, positive mental health and resilience increases. Thank you, and remember, all learning is social and emotional.